Today's show is about Mocha Java, really the world's oldest blend of coffee. The word mocha in it, I think, throws people off, Ken, because okay, it's association with chocolate. It's, a, it's also a brewing method, as we're viewing it today as a blend. It's my favorite blend and real treat to do this show. Mocha is another word for coffee from Yemen. Yemen is a country that if you look at a map, it's the corner of Saudi Arabian Peninsula that points towards Africa. It's rather arid, but it's very mountainous, very high elevations. And the coffee tradition there goes back to the beginnings of any coffee direct knowledge. It probably goes back to about 1000 AD. And the coffee was brought from Ethiopia across the Red Sea to to Yemen. In Yemen is where it developed into a commercial beverage where the coffee is, is dried and the fruit residue is removed. It's roasted, it's ground, it's brewed. We throw out the grounds, most of them, and <laughs> drink the coffee. So those processes were developed most likely in Yemen, perhaps earlier in Ethiopia, perhaps both places. When Europeans first discovered coffee, via the Ottoman Turks. The Ottoman Turks were a great empire that threatened Europe for a while and also ruled most of like Egypt, Syria, Palestine, and Yemen. And when they took over Yemen, the the Turks were, Ottoman Turks were great mercantile people. So they thought, well, this coffee, I assume they thought, (laughs) this product is uh, very uh, appealing. You know, we can make money with it. So they encouraged the growth of commerce and coffee. Now, after all of that, I'm sorry, I know I have a lot to say today. It's a rich subject. The mocha, it was the port, way the Europeanized the name al mocha. So mocha was the port where all of the coffee was shipped to the, and it, that was the only coffee that Europe knew for about 40, 50 years. And so it became a synonym for coffee. The Europeans were dependent on the Turks, which of course, being mercantile people themselves, they didn't like, so they had some new colonies they discovered. So they took the coffee trees through a long, colorful group of stories to other parts of the world. And one of the places, the Dutch, took it to Indonesia, to what's now called Java, a big island in Indonesia, the most populous island and planted it and was successful. So at that point, well, that was, be say, about 1700. So there were only two coffees in the world, the coffee that came from Yemen via Mocha and the coffee that came from Java. So it was, I suppose, a logical thing for the Europeans to put the two together. I don't know which was cheaper at the time, because Java, of course, it had come in the hold of sailing ships a long way and it had a shorter trip to ports like Venice from, from uh, Yemen. But at any rate, those are the two coffees. They were put together in various ways to, as the great progenitor, the, the original Mocha Java. We have no idea how those two coffees actually tasted. People speculate about how they were a perfect blend because uh, Java was, <laughs> was lower toned and richer and Yemen, which is a very high grown coffee, the mocha is very high grown, was more acidy, and, but we don't know that. Which is why I think, uh, as we'll talk about, mocha Java is such a, a rich and fascinating blending tradition because There's no real formula. (laughs) There's just an idea. It's two words. But people have explored it in very very rich ways in the coffee industry for many, many decades. And so that's, 
I'm sure, why we all find it so fascinating. I'm stopping. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to make sure, but I didn't want to interrupt you, but I, I, it, is, it is my favorite uh, coffee in many ways. I know it's a blend. It's got so many things that kind of uh, break the rules in, in a sense of what uh, anybody who would be consider themselves a connoisseur of fine coffees, but man, it is just a great, it's still a great uh, blend. I think we're going to agree with that today. Well, we'll see if we agree with that today. And maybe it's time to uh, pour a little coffee Well, no. In and, uh, it's first, it's time for Ken no. to say a little bit more. What's happened with Mocha Java, of course, is that the, because there's no official widely understood and agreed upon formula, because coffee from mocha is the world's original coffee. We know how it's produced because it's still produced that way. When I was in Yemen, maybe 15 years ago for a few months, I discovered that they, they dried it on rooftops and, and re removed the husks, the dried fruit with millstones. The millstones were not turned by animals like they were when the Europeans first came. They're by gasoline engines, but it still was hauled with millstones. And all the processes were done by hand. Today, there's been some modernization and some Yemen coffees are produced in more contemporary style using updated equipment. But in the case of Java, we don't know what those Java coffees tasted like because the coffee pr production in Java has changed so much over the years. There was a rust epidemic, the, like the kind that happened in Central America in 2012, that very early, that I, mean, I think the 18th century, swept through Java and wiped out the Arabica coffee. And so the Dutch had to move it to a different spot, high mountains, and then they modernized the industry at a certain point. So what that original coffee tastes like, we don't know. So the great thing about that is it gives people a lot of freedom with the Java part. <laughs> they can put almost anything in. And so it's really a kind of a taste. Insiders, really, maybe that's why you like it, because it's a, it's a kind of a, a slate for creativity on the part of of roasters and blenders, but it's based on a certain taste that has somehow retained its its character uh, through through maybe the last hundred years at any rate. That's part of the fascination. The Yemen is just a very rare, expensive coffee because it's so handmade, and so consequently, uh, people substitute for the mocha the Yemen. They substitute. Well, we'll talk about Ethiopian coffee and so on. So since this show is based on stump Ken, uh, you humiliate Ken and give him some problem he can't resolve. Uh, or, so the, the idea here, from my point of view, in terms of making this an exciting exercise for me, is to try to identify, at least to some degree, the two coffees, or maybe sometimes they put a third in, I wouldn't know about that, but the two coffees that are making up the blend. Are they the original mocha? Are they a, a dry processed natural Ethiopia, which is a much cheaper substitute for the mocha? Is it something else altogether? And the Java, is it a coffee from Java? Highly unlikely. It's <laughs> It might, maybe, but there are different kinds of Javas now. And uh, sometimes we get coffees from Sumatra because the coffee in Sumatra is processed in similar ways, old-fashioned ways, that probably were similar to the original Java. So that's a little background on the current composition of blends, and we see uh, whether I can, uh, you and I together can decide what's in these coffees. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.